Hi there. Oh, it's one of those days. I'm Black Bright. Um, broadcasting out the UK, I talk in a variety of subjects, mostly to do with people who may have been unjustly treated or who feel vulnerable or who need advice on something. I just try to make things clearer, give my opinion on stuff. I'm not an expert, um, but I do research on a few things and I put my little spin on it. Now, a lot of people have been asking me about narcissism and it's ironic because yesterday um, I've noticed in the newspaper that they've got this new groundbreaking law rule or whatever you want to call it in Scotland that's just been passed. It's the psychological domestic abuse law and it, it includes controlling and co coercive behaviour. And I was wondering whether or not narcissism would be included in that because that is what narcissistic abuse is. It is controlling coercive behaviour and it's psychological abuse. The thing is with narcissistic abuse is that it, it's not something you can evidence. It is something that gets beneath the skin, beneath your psyche, and it happens. The, um, the abuser uh, manages to do that because he preys on I'll talk about women for now because it happens there's more male narcissists than female narcissists because the male narcissist comes over as the perfect man. He comes over as everything you've ever wanted. He gets involved in your family. He gets involved in your friends. He gets involved in your life. He wants to know everything about you. It makes you feel as though he's interested. So he'll make you open every little private door you've had in your history so that you end up telling that individual everything and he becomes your best friend but it's all a game it's all a way of controlling controlling the victim or controlling that partner because what happens is is that when they have got everything and they know everything about you and they've made you do things that you wouldn't ordinarily do but you do it with them because they seem to be the most perfect person when they've got you into that kind of um frame that they've conditioned you to be in that is the time they start tormenting you that is the time they start giving you little digs that is the time they'll start discrediting things you do that is the time that they'll start doing things that are deliberately antagonizing and then challenge you in a very calm voice to make you feel as though you're behaving unreasonably narcissistic abusers are they're, they're not like sociopaths they're different from sociopaths I'm not quite sure what the difference is but my narcissistic abusers tend to feel shame within themselves they have this facade that is grandiose that is perfect that is um is everything that a woman um is looking for but they create it within themselves they create this facade and god forbid if you see, see underneath the facade you know that is when they turn against you that is when they start using everything you've ever told them against you so for those people who are in a narcissistic abuse rela abusive relationship it's very difficult for them to get out because what happens is is that they give them the silent treatment and then they'll um maybe it could be two weeks six weeks it could be even um two months whatever they know they, they don't normally let it last for longer than two months but instead of challenging why they've given you the silent treatment they won't do that they'll come back as nice as pie, as though nothing has gone wrong. They'll put their arms around you. They'll tell you how much they love you. And it leaves the, the victim feeling very confused. If they try to um, address the cause of the silence, they're met with hostility. So, or they're made to feel as though there was nothing that caused the silence. They were just having time to themselves. And so, it creates kind of confusion 
the, the whole thing is about belittling the victim and making them feel as though they have got no credibility at all. I don't know if you've ever seen, there was this um, black and white movie years ago where they tried to make a woman mentally ill by making her believe she was imagining things. I can't remember the name of the movie, but that is what a narcissist does. They'll make you believe that you're imagining their behavior and what is happening even though they're doing it right in front of your face. And what they'll also try to do is rile you up, get a rise out of you, and while and reach make you reach a stage where you're probably, you're not even the type to scream, but you're probably screaming and shouting and ranting and raging, and they'll be calm and they'll say, do you have to shout? Do you have to make all that noise? Why are you reacting like that? I'm talking to you calmly. Why are you screaming? And it forces you to look back at yourself and think, I can't explain this. It's not something you can explain to family. It's not something you can explain to friends. It's not something you can take to the police station and say, look, I am being psychologically abused because they will want the evidence. And the evidence is not clear. Even if you was to record that conversation that you just had with that narcissistic abuser, it would not warrant uh, you know, the police coming around and taking him in for abuse. It wouldn't. And that's what makes it so hard to define because it's not tangible. It's, it, it's like it plays on the psyche. So the traits of a narcissist, very quickly, stubborn, inflexible, rigid. That doesn't sound like it's too bad. Um, if they invalidate others, they're quite persuasive. And all of these on the surface look like their ordinary traits forceful um they'll say the other person is always wrong they have an attitude of entitlement they're manipulative and exploitative they have a sense of specialness and grandiosity if you don't go along with their game plan they'll punish you or wear you down they're very vain they're they're skilled in the silent treatment they don't get, and the funny thing is, is that when you think, when you're, you're probably thinking that when they give you the silent treatment, they're suffering. They're not. They don't have no empathy at all. They don't have no sense, no, nothing. They're like stone cold. It's all a game. Even when they come and ask you back after that silent treatment, they'll, and you decide, oh no, I don't want to go back out with you. They'll wear you down, making all these um, grandiose um, promises and stuff. They'll wear you down just because they want to win you over. Not because they want you, not even because they care about you. And that is what is difficult because they'll come over with all these grandiose promises and which um, another ordinary person wouldn't do. And they drag you in because they know you well enough to know what you want, to know your needs and everything. But their behavior then is inconsistent once they've got you back, once they've won that game. Their behavior is inconsistent with somebody who loves you like they say they do, who cares for you like they say they do. And that is where that kind of thing goes in your head is, if he loves me, why would he do that? You know, and that is where victims of um, narcissism start feet, start doubting themselves. Um they don't care about what the other person thinks or feels. They have a low level of empathy. You could be screaming and shouting. They don't feel a thing. You could be bawling your eyes out. They don't feel a thing. Um, they have a control agenda. They're always saying you should do, you must, you can't. Everything is set. Um, narcissists believe that life should be a certain way and they'll remind you when it's not going the way that they think it should go they're not interested in listening to what you have to say they believe everybody's an idiot or a moron they'll make you look as though you're always wrong they're defensive and thin-skinned so even though they have all of this um grandiosity and they come over as real tough guys they're really quite fragile and they're so scared stiff that you're going to either leave them or you're going to find out what, the, what they're really like. That is their worst fear. Um, they can't stand shame. They can't stand embarrassment. And that is their worst fear. So they cover it up with all this um, 
try to, well what they try to do is put other people down in order to elevate them and take the focus off themselves um, they need to stay in a superior position this is taken from psychology today um, these traits um, they need to stay in a superior position um, they always have to be one-upmanship they belittle other people criticize well normally it's not ev every and everybody it's usually the partner in their life that they belittle they criticize they love to put you in your place they love to find fault. Um, they can be charming, friendly, as long as you serve them. If you don't, they'll turn into a monster, I love to say. Narcissists, narcissists are adults who have a mindset of a child. So very, very childish sense of entitlement. Um, narcissistic abuse was coined in 1999 by Sam Batman as the name of his support group for the victims of narcissists. Um... The new law that has come into force that makes that psychological, domestic abuse and controlling behaviour a crime does not include narcissism. That's as far as I can see. And I think that's because you can't evidence it. The legislation covers not just physical abuse, but psychological and emotional treatment and coercive and controlling behaviour where abusers isolate, isolate their victim from their friends and relatives or control their finances. And you'll find that... Um, if you, you know, sometimes you'll confide in your partner and you say, or oh, your mum said something that's not right, or your sister or your daughter or your son said something, and they'll make it look like that person has not got your interest at heart. They'll make it look as though that person is a worse person. They'll even tell you not to talk to that person. They'll isolate you from that person. Members of your family, friends, if you dare tell them that something wrong or something, that person upset you, I mean, you're just sharing. But if you tell them that that person upset you, they'll try to isolate you and make it look like that person is such a bad person and you shouldn't have anything to do with them. And then if you try to have something to do with them, it's like you're betraying um, the abuser. You know, you're not taking what they say seriously. You're not, um, you're not, um, being loyal to them then um let me see what else because i've got to go to work um yeah what constitutes be abusive behavior making partner dependent or subordinate isolating a partner from friends relatives and other sources of support like i just said controlling regulating or monitoring a partner's day-to-day -day activities Depriving a partner of res or restricting freedom of action, frightening, humiliating, degrading or punishing a partner. A narcissist will try to gain your trust from the very beginning. And they use it from the beginning because that's when you're most vulnerable. That is when you're most susceptible. Um, from the very beginning by being everything you want them to be. They find ways to make you open up and tell them your deepest secrets and fears. And then they use them against you. When you don't do what they say, and they'll do it in a way that when you challenge them, they'll make you feel as though you're imagining things. Now, I can't speak much on a narciss on narcissists because I, I did meet a narcissist, but thank God I didn't get too involved with that person for it to um, reach the point where I got dragged in and I couldn't get out. But even having said that, that person just trolled me all the time and even though you block them they'll find ways there's a way even though you block i didn't know this but even though you block somebody from your phone they can still leave voicemail messages and it you know blocking doesn't stop voicemail messages and all this oh i need you i miss you and all this crap you know what i mean so i even though i haven't got the the wide experience that some of you who have asked me to talk about it you know i do understand what it's like and thank god i noticed the inconsistencies and i knew that there was something that's not quite right so i got out quick but for some people who have been with a narcissist for years i understand how exhausting frustrating and tiring and how just totally debilitating it must be so I see with you, but the only way you can get from a narcissist is to block them completely, to get away, go away somewhere where they can't get in touch with you until I don't even know how long. I don't even know how long because five years isn't even long enough. 
um, narcissists credit your appearance, your work, your friends, make you feel you're not doing enough for the narcissist. The act always the act also requires courts to consider imposing non-harassment order on the offender convicted of a domestic abuse offence to protect their victim from further abuse. But the non-harassment, yeah, I mean, yes, you can. I guess you could record every time that person texts or calls because they will. They'll text and call you incessantly. So you can keep those messages, store them, archive them. So you've got evidence because that is the only evidence you're going to get from a narcissist. The fact that their behavior, they can't control their obsessive behavior. Um, for police, it means that they can now include evidence of coercive and controlling behavior, where it forms a pattern alongside physical and sexual abuse. Um, this means documenting which can appear frivolous and petty when trying to relay to them. Oh, that was something I just put my thoughts in there. Justice Secretary Hamza Youssef said, the Domestic Abuse Act makes absolutely clear that coercive and controlling behaviour is, dom is domestic abuse and is a crime. Um, what else is there? For the first time, it is now allowing us to investigate and report the full circumstances of an abusive relationship. So maybe they will bring narcissism in there. In preparation for the change in law, our officers and staff have received further training on the dynamics of power and control in abusive relationships to help recognise the signs, identify investigative opportunities and to tackle the myths and misconceptions of abuse that still exist. This new offence is a clear warning to abusers that all forms of domestic abuse are criminal and that perpetrators should expect to face the full consequences of their, be of their abusive behaviour. And like I said, narcissists don't really love themselves. They're actually driven by shame. They're actually ashamed of themselves. They're actually embarrassed of their true selves. So they cover it up and make it and they... This is what this this is what psychology today says. It's the idealized image of themselves which convince themselves they embody that they admire. But deep down, narcissists feel the gap between the facade that they show to the world and their shame based self, and go, and they live to avoid shame. And that's what this is saying. It's saying that you know they have this idealized self which is the self that they give to the person in the beginning. And that, that, that ropes women in. But what happens is, because it's not real, it could be, the funny thing is, it could be real. But because they don't believe in themselves to that extent, they feel as though they've got to put on that facade, rope someone in. And once they've roped somebody in, they, they, they're living in fear that somebody will find out what they really like in their head. And so that's why they have to keep that person down. Because they believe that if that person finds out who they really are, in their imagination, they're going to feel embarrassed and shameful. And so they live this life, which is a lie, all of their lives because they're afraid. It's, it's, it's a most bizarre situation. So whoever finds themselves in that relationship, it is a victim because they can't pinpoint what's happening. All they know is that this person on the one side is everything that they want and that this same person is doing stuff to destroy their mentality and, in, and their sanity and their state of mind and their happiness. On one, on one score, they, they're the most perfect person in the world and they make you feel as though you love them. And on the other hand, you, you, you just cannot help but hate them because of the way they're making you feel and you cannot put your finger on it. It's most bizarre. They have this black and white movie like that where this man made her feel as though she was imagining things and it turned her mental. She ended up throwing herself down the stairs because she couldn't explain it and everybody else was saying, you know, oh, you're, t you're, you're talking rubbish. It's, it's a wonderful guy. You're over-exaggerating. And then if you've had a bad history of relationships, they'll just add that to it and make it look as though it's your fault. 
you're the one at fault. Nobody would be on your side. When you're in a, when you're with a narc when you're a victim of narcissist abuse, you'll find that nobody is on your side. It's a very lonely road. And that is why it's so scary. And that is why people feel as though they're pulling their hair out. So I do understand um, for those people who are in narcissistic relationships and have asked me to talk on it i do hope this is helpful um like i said i don't have that much experience well hardly any experience really but i'm hoping that my insight because i'm quite adept but i'm hoping the insight that allowed me to notice it quick enough and the thing is is that you cannot be needy with a narcissist they they thrive on need needy people so because I am independently minded, you know, I, I couldn't get drawn in. But God forbid, if you're dependently minded, you're going to be roped in. So and once you're roped in, it's very, very difficult to get out. The longer you're in that relationship, the harder it is to get out. So I do understand. Um, uh, they work hard to avoid feeling that shame, to fill this gap. Narcissists use destructive defense mechanisms that destroy relationships and cause pain and damage to their loved ones. And I also read someone that they're commitment phobes. They don't like to commit to a relationship because they're afraid that somebody's going to find out who they really are. Anyway, that's all I'm going to do. This is my second try attempt at this. I didn't have the record button on the first time. So this isn't as um, passionate and as inspirational as my first video, but I hope it still answers your questions and sets you at ease. And I, once again, I do hope this domestic abuse law that focuses on psychological abuse and controlling and coercive behavior will incorporate narcissism in the policy. That's all for now. Bye-bye.